definitely bring some new image to the Soviet Union. I think it's a lot of PR work, too. Uh, he modernizes everything. He helped the Soviet Union a little bit, like fighting the alcohol, alcohol problem. He yeah. raised the age limit from two to four. Oh, that's that helped a lot. A lot, you know, a yes. lot yeah. And um, he is also changing the image, like, for example, the Soviet flag. He said he wants to replace the hammer and the sickle and put in power drill and a weed whacker. <laughs> that might help, too. That's modernizing. Yes. Yeah. He's coming to America, which might be an interesting change there. In but November. In November, he's going to have a meeting with Reagan. And I think they should meet in Las Vegas, personally. They should play blackjack, for example, and bet all the missiles. And we know who's going to win, the house. Yeah, that's right. Wayne Newton is going to run the world. <laughs> but we all can buy breakfast for 99 cents. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what about American politics? <laughs> Well, um, I personally don't know. Uh, to me, it's all new. Uh, for example, like Iran-Contra. Reagan says he doesn't know anything about Iran-Contra, and doctors keep cutting... It's terrible. Him. I was forced to substitute teach. The worst. Second grade. These kids were bust in from hell. I will never forget this class. I was subbing for this woman named Susan. And all day, these little, annoying, demonic children are coming up to me. They're going, you know, Susan doesn't do it that way. You know, Susan lets us play. Susan gives us gum. Susan's prettier than you. Oh, really? Well, Susan's dead. The wind chill factor. What is it? And why do I have to know about it? Why do I have to know exactly how cold I am? As far as I'm concerned, let the guy come on television. It's cold out today. Do I need a coat? Yes, you do. Thank you. I took biology. They told me there was no God. I was shocked. I was an altar boy. Don't tell me there's no God. I used to work for the guy. What could possibly be less strenuous and more boring than bowling on television? <laughs> golf, okay, golf. <laughs> I confess, being from Wisconsin, I'll watch golf on TV, you know, just to see really good weather. <laughs> but who's riveted to their seat for a golf match? Who calls eight friends, gets a keg of beer? What? <laughs> what landscapers? I don't get it. <laughs> Sitting around a TV, look at that cart path. That's pea gravel. Tony, get in here, check this out. <laughs> Tennis, I won't watch tennis on television. I just won't watch it. Too many arguments. Is the ball in? Is it out? Is it in? Is it out? Why don't they just make the out-of-bounds out of Velcro? I'm in an aerobics class, which is weird because I'm usually the only guy in the class, you know. All the guys are, like, in the free weight room. That's where they are. That's where all the guys are. You can see them through the glass, you know. They're walking around like... You know, they have those belts on, you know, because they're invertebrates, you know. <laughs> But they're doing all the manly exercises, you know, they're cleaning and jerking, you know, and screaming at each other. Do another rep! Do another rep! <laughs> I'm in the next room going, it's raining men. We have another question. Mr. President, Mr. President, what should we be doing to fight apartheid in South Africa? Apartheid? South Africa. Well, I met with the Bishop of Desmond, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Tutu. Well, he's not the first Tutu that I've seen. My son has a whole closet full of Tutu. Well, we have to continue to support the government and their policy of systematically denegregating that society. Segregating that society. Now hold on, folks. I'm perfectly well aware of what I'm saying. It's, it's what I mean that I have no idea. I do date, only I don't call them dates anymore. I call them what they are. Hopeless acts of desperation. <laughs> Most men don't want to get involved. My last boyfriend was awful. We were playing tennis. He couldn't even say 30 love. 
I kept saying, 30, I really like you, but I still have to see other people. <laughs> I dated him for two years, and finally I just gave him an ultimatum. I said, listen, either you tell me your name or it's over. <laughs> you know how I end relationships now? I don't say, this isn't working out, or I don't want to see you anymore. If I never want to see a man again, I just say, you know, I love you. I want to marry you. I want to have your children. Sometimes I leave skid marks. You guys, guys just want to get the argument over with. Now look, you told me I did wrong. I said I'm sorry. Argument's over with. No, argument is not over with. It's not over that easy. We're going to talk this thing out. I want to know your feelings. You know my feelings. We have communication here. No communication. Same, same things happen time and time again. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I won't do it again until I do it again. Then I'll say I'm sorry again. What this gang, the other day, I drove by a 24-hour motel. <laughs> Is there a motel that isn't open 24 hours? That could take the edge off your vacation. You're in bed for the night, 3 a.m., some guy comes in with a flashlight. Folks, let's go. We're closing up. Back it up, show's over. It's the only time the United States and the Soviet Union agree on anything is when they're telling a mutual lie about some sort of a nuclear disaster. Case in point, a couple months ago, that Soviet sub went down near the Bahamas. Before this thing even touched the bottom of the ocean, both sides could lip sync the lie. Low level stuff, don't even worry about it. No ecological damage, don't worry about it. Six months from now, the 800 foot shark's going by. It's a tourist attraction. <laughs> You know, the difference between an American nuclear accident and a Soviet nuclear accident? You can get someone to clean up a Soviet nuclear accident. <laughs> Wait for the first American one. Thanks a lot. We're out of here. <laughs> Canada was due north, wasn't it? We'll be the guys pounding the Molsons in the cave. The macho thing gets so out of hand. You know, I went to buy sheets for my boyfriend. You know what he said to me? Don't come home with anything frilly with flowers on it. So what do you want, man sheets? <laughs> what do you want, sheets with tools on it, huh? <laughs> spread with a wrench hanging off the side. Now, honey, those new Vietnam sheets came in. <sighs> I'm in love. And uh, if you're in love, you can identify with this feeling. You ever come home late at night, have a really dreamy look in your eyes, close the door, hear yourself saying, babe. <laughs> now it's just you and me. Realize you're talking to a pint of haagen ice cream. <laughs> This is a scene from every late-night Japanese science fiction movie. Here we go. Oh, no! Come on! Oh, I know where I get my humor from. This is how my mother reacts at the end of Scarface. Al Pacino is in the top flight of his stairs in this mansion. These army of guys are coming upstairs trying to kill him. He's got this big machine gun. Say hello to my little friend. <laughs> guys off blood is hitting the paintings they zoom back this panoramic shot my mom says oh, that's a lovely house i don't think i'm gonna get married again I, i'll tell you the truth i think i'll just uh, i read in newsweek that a woman over 35 her chances of being married are equivalent to being kidnapped by terrorists <laughs> to me these two things are equivalent okay <laughs> the point i want a man in my life but not in my house i can't so and then of course then of course mcenroe you know i hope he makes his comeback he has a kid now i just hope mcenroe's kid acts and sounds exactly like he does like around the house oh uh, mom you know it's just about putting away my laundry you know there's a sock missing from my laundry basket no there's a sock missing from my laundry basket did you see where the sock went could you not see with the sock wet? Were you watching the dryer? Moms are great. Everything my mother ever did to me sticks with me to this day. Like my mom had theme music to clean the house. Whenever she vacuumed, she listened to Barbara Streisand music. What's really weird is now if I'm out somewhere and I hear Barbara Streisand music, I lift my feet. <laughs> 